and Brendan Byrne. You're Anthony back. Colangelo. Yeah. No homework. No homework this time for you. No homework. <laughs> no, no props. No props. I was I was really expecting a package for you this week, but uh... <laughs> I should have sent you something. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. Darn. And I'm not in my uh, office. It, it sits in my office, and every now and then, when I want to feel important, when I'm at the office, I like pull it out and start talking to myself with that microphone. You could, you so, could attach yeah. that to a podium and then always have like a little press conference ready to go for yourself. That's true. I, <laughs> should. I really should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome back. It's been a while. Glad to be oh, back. Dude. Glad to be good to see yeah, you guys. Yeah. It's always fun. Jake, yeah. you holding up down there? I'm doing good. Yeah, yeah. I'm having a very busy week and it's like, there's not a lot of downtime and it's been, it's been one of those weeks, you know, where you're just kind of like running from one fire to another and it's really nice to be able to just turn this on and hang out with you guys. <laughs> I'm stoked well, for it. So, yeah. Who knows? So what are we, what are we doing? What we're we, have a, we have a list of random topics that we thought it would be fun to talk about in no particular yeah. order. And we're going to see where that takes us. Maybe we should have given Brendan homework so that we're actually doing something <laughs> at the table here. Yeah, you said that the, the, the email says off phenomenal with no homework, and then it's a list of things that I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Research all of this. Yeah. <laughs> all right, fair point. Um... Fair point. Uh, you could leave if you want. We could take the next 57 <laughs> minutes for you, you know? Yeah. Um... No, that's okay. I'm sure we'll figure it out. There's lots yeah. going on right nowadays. September's always a busy time. There's things happening. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you got down there, Jake? Did you cook something up? What do I got? Yeah, I got a, I got a nice little Mai Tai going on here mm. today. A little bit of rum and uh, orange liqueur and sort of some uh, posh in here, the little Mayan drink and some... Uh, what else in there? Amaretto. Yeah, it's kind of a little mix of mix of stuff here. You have had a busy week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just keep dumping stuff in. Not my first drink this week either. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? Oh, what do I got? I got a Victory Cloud Walker. I always like this one. It's got the little like those cool airplanes oh, yeah. on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, those things are sweet. Got into those nice. recently with Will. They're uh Immediately, we lost a couple pieces, obviously, so they don't fly that well anymore. But man, I forgot how fun those things are. Mm -hmm. I thought you said you got into the beer a little bit with Will. No, no. Like, oh, I don't, I don't know like, how they wow. do things in Philadelphia, but hey, I don't know how they throw shade on you. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, man. What do you got, Brendan? Uh, I got an, another hazy one, like you, Anthony, um, from St. Pete, which I think has the best beer here in Florida. I got a, a Skyway. Oh. Skyway uh, from Green Bench, uh, which is, uh, I took a trip to St. Pete uh, a few years ago and like spent the entire trip at Green Bench Brewery, which was awesome. <laughs> uh, and I didn't open it yet because I wasn't sure if we still did this on the show. So uh, I didn't want to be the yeah, only usually, one. Usually. Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> so oh, there we go. What do you mean? Do we drink on the show or that we yeah. open them? That we have to have <laughs> audible opening show. noises? That we drink we on need, the show. Yeah. We need that off nominal ASMR of the can <laughs> yeah. opening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, cheers. I will. Uh, I will. Uh, in in my branded uh, my branded pint glass here. So oh, look we'll, at that! Uh, no, so all I can you must do have made a little donation. Glass. <laughs> glass oh, speaking of which, Jake, let's plug it early this time. Mm. Um, oh, that's the first topic of the day, actually, Jake. Uh, okay. It, we've, that we did not put on our rundown, but uh, so our friends at Relay FM have been running this fundraiser for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. And we put a little mini campaign situation together. It's like part of their campaign. And then we go up the leaderboard and yada, yada. We're pretty far up the leaderboard. I got to say, it's, it's like two people above us that are listed as uh, fundraising campaigns for this relay campaign overall. And uh, two of them made themselves a campaign and donated a ton of money to them to their own thing. So they're up the board. So I feel like we're like number two of the legitimate sub campaigns <laughs> here. And I have some pride in that. That's good. I'm here for this gatekeeping. I love yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm totally gatekeeping on this one. Uh, Offnom.com slash donate goes to this page. Uh, we're not getting any of this money. It's all going to St. Jude and stuff. But we did set a goal, Brendan, that if we hit our fundraising goal, which we set at 1% of this overall campaign, that we would do a terrible space movie review show with oh. Stephen Hackett of Relay FM. So we hit the goal. And, oh, awesome. Uh, he's coming on October 19th. And I, I don't know where you're at on terrible movies, but Jake loves these like 
horrifically bad sci-fi movies. I feel like this is up your alley. Yeah, uh, I've been I've been uh, I'm getting ready to ramp up and watch some really terrible horror movies because we're getting into spooky season. So, uh, ooh, ooh. But yeah, no, I'll totally tune in. I'll, I'll switch gears and watch some sci-fi with you guys. That'll be cool. Yeah. We we yeah. have to develop the things on the list, Jake. And this is where we we did some research earlier this week of what things are on our nomination list. Uh, yeah. So maybe maybe we can solidify on a particular set so that number one me and you can watch the movies number two anyone else out there can watch them if they want uh, sure, sure. uh and maybe brendan can help trim us in to the right mix so okay. do you All have right. the list nearby jake uh let me i have it up. up i just didn't know if you want to be the <laughs> the one that we're convinced that we need to have on this list uh, yeah, i would uh... I should have picked up on where you were going with that. If I was oh, a you had no idea where I was going. Got it. I yeah. would have like known that you were really kind of going mm -hmm. for the you know the setup there. But the I one that we so are pretty convinced that we need to have that we need to watch is Ad Astra because neither of us mm -hmm. have seen it. I have yeah. not seen that either. I have not seen that either. Oh. I'm I'm curious because I remember when this came out and it got a lot of flack for being horrible, and everyone was calling it Dad Astra. But now I'm going to watch <laughs> it as a dad, and I'm like. I wonder if that um, is it going to hit different for me than it did for everyone else at the time. I don't know. I'm not sure. Unclear. Yeah, yeah. I think we need to do that one. That's like our big, our big budget blockbuster uh, one that we want to do because, and we've we've had people in the Discord talking about it a lot about how just how it, it's it's so bad it's bad. <laughs> it's one of those kind of movies apparently. Not so bad that it's good, but just so bad that it's just bad. <laughs> and so I'm excited to uh, see how rough it is. You always know when there's the huge Rotten Tomatoes divergence that of what you're getting into, right? When the tomato meter is 83% and audience score is 40%, you know what territory you're entering. So mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. that one's got to be in there. And then we were looking at some old ones. Um, one that I don't think will make the cut, but and I feel like Brendan will have seen this movie for uh, knowing that he's the football fan that he is. Uh, is Capricorn One? Have you ever seen yes! this movie, Brendan? That's a fantastic movie. That's a fantastic movie. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's a uh, great cast. Yeah. <laughs> turns out uh, O.J. Simpson starring in a movie where he's running away from stuff. Uh, yeah. Turns out he's good at the role. <laughs> Who would have thought? Isn't like, isn't Sam Sam Waterson in that too? Who else is in that movie? Um, Jake was impressed by the cast list for sure. Yeah, yeah. I know. I like. I remember renting that movie from like blockbuster as a kid um yeah, it's got Elliot Gould in there. There. yeah 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 no, i thought it was great i mean obviously i watched it when i was like nine uh but yeah i thought it was great <laughs> for those not is. versed in this uh yeah. the, the is a 1977 movie and the thesis is nasa faked the mars landing and then like hijinks ensue after that and the astronauts are like they get pulled out of the capsule at the last moment. I'm not spoiling anything. It's literally the, number one. This movie's from 1977. So if you haven't seen it, then there's no spoiler. The statute of limitations. Yeah, you're way over. over. <laughs> uh, number two, it's the first minute of the movie. But they get like, what is it, Brennan? That they they didn't know they were gonna fake it or something? Yeah, I think that's what. And they the get pulled was. out of the capsule, yeah. and then yeah. they're running away from like the deep state or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, yeah. It's all a thing. I so, thought it was great. Yeah. Fantastic. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sam Watterson yeah. is in that one. I had to I Googled that. I was actually correct at for, for once. So yeah. And what was yeah, this yeah. movie, Jake, that we're pumped on? Starflight One? Yeah, this was recommended to us in the Discord and it looks like a banger. I am so excited for this one. Like I just can't wait to to dig into this. But basically it's like there's a some sort of like really high altitude hypersonic jet flight and something bad happens and it has to be rescued but i guess it's in space i don't know i don't really get <laughs> i don't really get the premise here i'm not, like i'm looking at this poster where there's a space shuttle docking with a hypersonic jet yeah and I'm docking not via this umbilical physics. though that's yeah. ex also I am exploding not clear on the physics of this <laughs> but i'm really excited to figure out what's going on here so yeah starflight the plane that couldn't land from 1983 so which is just uh, also an incredible incredible yeah title. lee yeah. majors is in it uh <laughs> it's it's like a definitely like an older generation of Hollywood, like one of those times where like you look at the cast and it's all actors you you've just never heard of because you're not 70, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> it definitely so, has yeah. the vibe of like uh, someone like this just looks like airplane. And yeah. and I'm curious, like how <laughs> airplane inspired it is in in the like 
<laughs> you know, what were they going for here? Uh, I don't know. Man, I, this four point some... eight on IMDb. That's bad. Huh? That's... Yeah, it was eighteen <laughs> percent on the uh, Rotten Tomato audience score. So here he goes. There's the plane that just keeps going. So yeah. Um, this is just going to be great. So this one's on the list. So it's Ad Astra, Starflight, the plane that couldn't land. And then I think there's the main decision we need to make is is what's next. Um, there's one that's called Disney's The Black Hole. Has anyone seen this? Mm-mm. No. Um, we were recommended it. Apparently, I, I did a little reading on it. Um, it was like an insanely high budget Disney film, but they never thought, they never figured out what the ending was. So they just kind of, the movie just kind of stops. Uh, <laughs> reportedly, per some writing on it way after the fact. Um, the one I would like to watch is called Solar Crisis. All right? I'm going to read you the uh, just the description from IMDb. I'm not going to show you anything about this yet, but I'm just going to read the description. A huge solar flare is predicted to fry Earth. Astronauts must fly to the sun to drop a talking bomb, in parentheses, Freddy, at the right time so the flare will point somewhere else. Giant IXL Corp CEO Teague thinks the flare won't happen and wants the mission to fail so he can buy the planet cheaply while the scare lasts. <laughs> it goes on from there. But it's just, like, how can you fight that premise, Jake? Yeah, and it's got Tim Matheson in it, who I'm a big Tim Matheson fan, so pretty stoked. A talking that. bomb named Freddy. What is going on there? What is? <laughs> what do you think that means? I don't know what that, that means. <laughs> yeah, I can't figure it out. It talks. Well, I, I, at first, when I heard that, it, it sounded like some sort of military jargon that I just didn't know. Like, oh, yeah, it's a talking bomb, you know, because when you drop it, it everyone calls it. I don't know. There's some there's some effect from some time when, you know, one of those things. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. T tweet us if you know what a talking yeah. bomb is. <laughs> um, the other one that we were thinking about, Brendan, was Moonfall. And this is like the more recent. What was this last mm -hmm. year, right? Um, the Moon's Hollow. Ago, I think. Is it Moon's Hollow or something? Moon's a Dyson Sphere? Moon blows up, uh, yeah. I thought, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Did you did Moon's you watch Moonfall down. or anything? No. I did not. I did not. Hmm. What do you think? Okay. Modern one or the, the 1990 solar crisis with the talking bomb? <laughs> I, man, that, one, that sounds great. If you're asking me, I would say do that one, but... I don't actually have to watch these, so I'll leave it to Jake. Maybe, answer. Jake, what if... Uh... All right, I have an idea. We'll both watch the other two, and then you... I know you wanted to watch Moonfall, so you watch yeah. Moonfall, I'll watch Solar Crisis, and we'll try to convince Stephen Hackett to watch the one that we watched. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we will stand this is for getting the complex. <laughs> <laughs> Our, we're letting this show come to us very it's hard. It's coming right to now. us right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm making an executive decision. Um, that's right, what we're okay. going to watch. So, yeah. We'll do it's them great. all. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that's settled. Should we talk about space? Right. <laughs> yes. I mean, that was kind of talking uh, about space. You both saw a spaceship coming back to Earth, and you, you, I don't, Jake's seen these before. Brennan, was this your first time seeing this? I believe this was my first time. This was my first, first dragon. Time. First dragon. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was incredible. Like I was, I was working on, uh, covering it for, uh, Oh yeah. Look, there's my house. Ha ha. I did. I didn't get a chance to weed whack that day. Us. So I apologize. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, and yeah, if you look, if you look real closely, you can see the dog <laughs> in the window, right in the window. Like what the I, hell are you I was trying about? to look for that, but uh, Twitter, I think, yeah, all the image it's sizing it's much, except yeah. for the SpaceX tweets because they don't want to post them to Flickr or whatever at this point. But well, like it was it was super yeah. late, and my editor was like, "You're gonna be able to see it," and I'm like, "Whatever, Russell. Like, I can I see launches all the time." He's like, "No, you gotta go see this. It's totally different, man." And because I can look out my my window and I it's due east, I can see you know both uh you know uh, KSC and Cape Canaveral launches from here. And so he's like, go outside, go outside. And I went outside and I was like, super glad I did. Cause holy crap, like that is just incredible. And yeah. man, that thing was booking it through the sky. Like mm -hmm. it was, it was really, really neat. I'm really um, curious to know how, how our perspectives were different. Cause you know, I was like three or four minutes before you. Um, oh yeah. And so I, it would have been faster and higher, but I don't know how fast, how much faster, how much higher, like it just really wasn't that yeah. big of a, of a change. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm like, I, I you would have been, I assume it would have been like a lot closer to you, but I just don't know if that would have been like, uh, yeah, a big deal, you know, 
Well, you'll have to come here and I'll go there and then we'll compare yeah, that to yeah. the next one. Uh, so yours looks more overhead though, Jake. Yeah, yeah this one went right over top. Like I couldn't believe it. This 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 is the second one I've seen from from Yucatan, and this was way better than the first one. It was so high. Um like probably at like 85, 87 degrees uh, mm -hmm. uh elevation for me. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, for us it 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 definitely was much lower in the sky and like you could see it just streak all across and it it was there yeah. for like I almost woke my wife up, which that could have gone either way. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was really, really cool. And I'm glad I did it. Um that was crew six, right? So yeah, yeah. so I, I interviewed um uh, Woody on there. So it was like really cool to like know, hey, this this dude that I talked to is like, f you know, zooming across you know, the <laughs> sky right above my house right now. So of course I waved and I'm sure he didn't see it. <laughs> but it was really cool. Yeah. You should have <laughs> taken a boat out to meet him. There we go. <laughs> it's the Florida way. <laughs> that is the um, Florida way. Yeah. I, I went up on my roof to do it. We, I have a nice flat roof, so it's a good place to just kind of go up and get above the tree line. And so I were watching it, and my my neighbors were down, like on the other side of the house, down in their yard, looking up at it too. And they and they just happened to see it because they were like doing laundry outside or something like that. And they were like, "What is that?" So I had to explain in Spanish what was going on, and like it, <laughs> it was not a very convincing conversation. Let me tell you what: <laughs> I'm getting pretty good at Spanish, but uh, advanced human space flight is not quite in my vocabulary yet. <laughs> For that one minute, you turned into the guy from the Lego movie, just space. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I got out space and vehicle and coming home, and I think that was enough. And, and NASA is still a known word, so I think I was okay there. Yeah, and they, they went back in the house like, that that dude was fucking high. I don't know what yeah. is going on out there. Like, well, he thinks this is like some E.T. The... E shit or something. <laughs> like... I mean, we're already the weird white people that live in this like, rural Mexican town, so I'm sure it couldn't have hurt my reputation any more than it already is. So... Yeah, you. They're they're like I don't know, man. That's that guy who's always on his roof pointing at shit or this yeah, satellite exactly. dish. Like, <laughs> like, like, get down. <laughs> Why are you up there? <laughs> Wait. So, all right. Take me through. You both are fairly mind blown by these events. Is it the apparent speed of this, since it is so much lower and it's still incredibly fast? Is it just the like the thinking about it that gets you? What's the what's the vibe on this? Yeah, I think like I think you have like knowing what it is is definitely like I mean it's people you know returning to this planet which is pretty friggin wild if you think about it mm -hmm. and I you know I was I, I was talking with with my editor about it, Russell Lewis um, at NPR and we're like yeah like they're finally like NASA's remember NASA wouldn't tell you like if you'd be able to see it or where it was coming from they didn't publicize it at all and like they have for for the past few launches at least I think um, but it's like they really should make this a lot more public because I mean, it's almost cooler than a launch at this point. Like how rare is it to see a capsule filled with people like come back to the earth? Like it's yeah. kind of mind blowing. And if, I mean, if you don't know what it is, like Jake's neighbors, it's like, okay, crazy guy looking at the sky. Um, but if you do know what it is, like it's pretty mind bogglingly cool. Like, yeah, yeah. People. And it is fast. Like it, it seemed like it was a lot faster than a launch, um, you know, which, would be um but um but yeah it, it was definitely far far different than seeing it launch well you know how like when you see the iss come over it's like the, i mean iss is not quite as spectacular as this but it has the, that kind of like characteristic of it's going pretty fast like it's it's very clearly like fast it's a different you know velocity regimen than an airplane or anything like that like it, there's something very very kind of different about it just because of how, how fast it is but i think the constancy of it is really interesting like it just like very much like traces a mm -hmm. line at a very very constant speed and does not deviate like nothing changes about it it's like a very kind of fixed thing right and this had that too like it even though it was like very much slowing down it still felt like it was just coming in a line and going straight and was not nothing was was moving it from its from its path um but then you just get to add like it's way closer so it's bigger and it's like it's on fire and it's like you know lighting <laughs> up the sky like you can see um it, if the lighting's right you can see the smoke trail behind it like yeah like a, a, yes uh, it was like, like a con trail from the capsule that like you know still cuts across the sky um which is pretty cool so there's i don't know it's just very surreal like it's very Oh, I don't know. It was it's it's awesome. It, it took my breath away the first time yeah. I saw it. So, no. yeah, yeah, I'm I'm very excited to see another one. I like hope hope there'll be another one soon, and I will wake up my wife and 
<laughs> it's planned a trip cool. down for one yeah. of those. Yeah. Yeah. These are way yeah. more. This is way easier to catch on the schedule than a launch. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unless it's Frank Rubio, back. you <laughs> kind of have a good sense for when you're when you're coming home. Yeah. Yeah, and once they commit to it, like it's, it's right. not good. Yeah, I could book a flight <laughs> then when they undock, yeah. and I'll probably catch yeah. it. You know. Yeah. We'll see it. You will see it. Yeah. The one that I always think of is the. Uh, I saw like the last orbit or two of the. Was it the original Tiangong or Tiangong 2? I forget which one it was uh, a couple years back. We were, we were doing the show at this point. I think it maybe it was original Tiangong. And uh, cool. this was like, you know, Jonathan McDowell tracking, you know, when is it actually right, going to fall right, out of the sky? And this was barely still in orbit. And I got to see a pass of that. And I was like, holy oh, that's shit, cool. that thing is moving. Because yeah. it's like twice yeah. as close as the ISS. Just similarly... You know, like yeah, the ISS. You're right, Jake. It's got like a clock kind of vibe to it when it passes. Yeah. Uh, this did not at all. I felt like, holy shit, that thing is like grazing the atmosphere in a fairly terrifying manner right now because it was just <laughs> here and gone in no time. So there's definitely, and launches are kind of funny that they, the initial part happens really fast and then, the next six minutes are like a slow, departure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it sounds weird, but yeah, it, yeah. after the first minute and a half, you're like, this is kind of a calm yeah. experience as I watch this light go into the sky and then yeah, go over yeah, the yeah. horizon, <laughs> especially if it's a night launch and you get to see it drop over the horizon and it's like mm -hmm. a calming moment. <laughs> I think this, yeah. you're right, with like fire and a very a lot of pomp around this, it's much more mm -hmm. Kool-Aid man. than the Well, and, and the launch thing, you have that effect where like you get the, the, the fun part is going up, but then like it very quickly pivots and it's going away from you. Yeah. Right? And that's like, that part's super boring, right? Because you're just like, you're just seeing yeah. the ass end of the rocket and there's not much else to, it gets too small to, to get any details out. So then it's just like a light. But this has this like very- I cannot tell if you said ascent or ass end of the rocket. I really can't tell. So Both. I love that. I love that. We'll, yeah. leave, we'll leave that to the listeners to decide. Um, <laughs> no, but you get this like really arcing motion where it's it never it's always going perpendicular to your sight line, and so like it's it stays as cool as it is from start to finish, right? Which mm -hmm. I, and it was. Like, I guess you need to see one. This is the point. <laughs> yeah, it, it it's quiet. Obviously, like the return, you don't hear anything. But like to me, it looked like it was screaming across the night sky like it was like it was really really cool um yeah come on down anthony i mean no, come on down anthony to mm. me not to yeah him. that's true that's true <laughs> um listen brennan you casually are just dropping these references to like this time i talked to these astronauts you've been talking to a lot of astronauts lately uh we should it's we been... should talk about that <laughs> what so you know what's going on why are you chatting up so many astronauts well it's kind of my job like my boss is like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like you haven't talked to enough astronauts like <laughs> anthony what's the deal you're making all these podcasts what's yeah. going on yeah. with <laughs> well it's funny for, it's it's a funny thing for us though just to pull back the curtain a little because we're like ah, what are we going to get out of them like they kind of mm -hmm. have to say what they're going to say about it and then you know like, can we get more out of that? Or are they just going to do their astronaut thing? You know, mm -hmm. that's how we <laughs> yeah. feel. That's to convince us. Otherwise. I will say talking to like veteran astronauts, those who are no longer with NASA are definitely yeah, that's the one. one. That's the one. <laughs> that's, the one yeah. that's the money right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the money. Um, I mean, talking to, you know, actual NASA astronauts, super cool. Like I had, I had this incredible conversation with Christina Cook, um, like before she was announced for Artemis two, I was doing a story on like the training protocols and like what they're doing. And like, we talked for like an hour and she just like totally geeked out onto, you know, training and, you know, what they're doing for Artemis. And, and, you know, like it was like super cool. Like they're awesome people to actually chat with, but like, yeah, those, those former astronauts are, are really cool. And like, I was, I was writing a story. Um, my NPR editor is, he's like a huge space fan. Um, and you know, he got a promotion, uh, but wanted to make sure that he was still editing space. Uh, so that's why we're still working together. And he came to me and he's, he's, I file a story and he's like, yeah, you know, we've heard from, you know, this astronaut a lot. Do you have any more astronauts you can reach out to? Like just to diversify who we're talking to. I'm like, oh yeah, sure. Let me just go pick up the phone and find another astronaut. Let me get my astronaut, astronaut book like, out real quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> First of all, there's only like 600 of them ever, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, 
I know it's not too easy to, to pick up an astronaut or pick up the phone and call an astronaut, but uh, but no, it's it's not lost on me just how kind of honored I am to to be able to have those conversations with them and and like have them you know return my calls and return my emails and say yeah I'd love to chat with you so it, it is really cool it's super cool yeah it's a wild feeling you um so you you actually interviewed I wanted to ask you about this one because you actually interviewed someone in space recently and I I want to kind of hear that story because I feel like that that must come with a little bit of extra logistics I don't know if that's true or not or if, if, if we figured out the the communication lines perfectly now or not <laughs> <laughs> well I was like super terrified about that right because of all of the logistics um it was yeah. like you connect through a web browser just like oh, I'm talking to you guys yeah. right now <laughs> you use Zencaster to yeah. get the ISS, yeah. Yeah. Now, that was a cool one like that was um that was John Schaffner who was on Schaffner, AX2 yeah. and um, he, he, his PR people actually reached out to us like right when he was uh, announced for that position, he was a big fan of NPR and, and um, you know, wanted to chat with us. And so uh, I, I realized he was doing, I try to do something different for every human launch. Like, you know, not just it's going to go up with these people, but you know, kind of look at a different unique aspect for every launch. And John was doing, um, an art project or an art contest in space. And so we decided to do a story on kind of the history of art. And so, so him and I talked quite a bit about it. And, um, and at that point, like when I first interviewed him, I had no idea that I was going to get to chat with him in orbit. And um, so I interviewed him then, and then we did a few follow-up interviews as he's prepping for this mission and stuff. So I talked to him like two or three times before he left. And then like after that last interview like he's in quarantine and you know hang up and right before i hang up I'm like you know john you know i'll chat with you when you're back on the ground you know he's like, yeah of course can't wait to chat with you and so he hangs up and then it's like his pr person calls me it was like hey so we had someone drop out um would you want to chat with him on orbit and like the answer is of course yes <laughs> like, <I'm> like <laughs> of course <I> do. <laughs> so um yeah so there were there were multiple emails at, like with like probably dozens of people that were like coordinating this but they basically just gave me a time and logged into this you know kind of web platform um and there was the uplink to the station um he couldn't see me but i could see him um and yeah they've got this they called it the set so like he had to be on set so they actually have like a place on the international space mm -hmm. station where yeah. they do these kind of interviews from um yeah it was super it was super wild like to just be talking with him and then like seeing another astronaut like kind of float behind him like actually doing, <laughs> doing work and i'm like what's it like what's the bathroom like up there john you know <laughs> but uh yeah it was it was it was really really neat and uh um, there's video of me and i think we might have we might have mixed it down um like like you can't pull the smile off my face during this entire interview because it's like you know how many people get to do this and and i have the opportunity to chat with this guy who's you know flying yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 230 some miles above my head at this point. So it was it was really cool. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, look at this. Yeah, look I even went to the set. I even went to the you set went thinking the set, that they were yeah. gonna that they were gonna send it up there and uh uh they didn't. So like You got your lighting all nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, he's he's great. So I, I talked with him uh when he came back and he's doing some really cool stuff with education outreach now and um yeah, just a great guy to 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 chat with and, and get to know and you know shared some really cool stuff about uh, about the trip so that's um one of the kind of like side benefits to having more like private astronauts kind of doing this thing is that at least for right now a lot of them have kind of like their own agendas right and they get to they get to bring like along with going to space they get to bring some of their their interests their passions that you know their causes to to, to make the space flight a little more unique right because I, I'm not that NASA astronauts don't have, you know, interests or anything, but they, they're, they're very much going under the NASA umbrella. And so they yeah. kind of have to be, they have to be NASA spokespeople. Right. Um, but. And they're 80% of the time there. is working out or doing blood work. Like, like <laughs> yeah. Into a bottle. like that's, you know. Yeah. So, so I mean, I like an art contest, like that's pretty cool. And, and I know that there's, there's NASA astronauts that do the art stuff. I mean, you hang out a lot with one that, that paints a mm. lot, I think. Right. Um, mm uh nicole right nicole's nicole Stott, right? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Stott. she's a she's a part a painter or something um but i, I just think it's kind of cool that we get to kind of see some i don't know some just different sort of unique very personal interests sort of come into the spotlight of what these flights are about so that's cool that you got to talk to them about yeah that. 
and I mean, he he specifically wanted to do that. Like, you know, it, yeah. he was he was talking to to schools while he was up there, and then you know, a lot of a lot of the the content that he was doing was specifically to be given out for educational reasons down here on Earth. So it's it's not just about art, but it was you know kind of you know some physics experiments and stuff like that up there. But yeah, it, like that was part of his contract with Axiom was that he would have X amount of time to do these kind of outreach things. And uh, you're absolutely right, Jake. Like we're going to get a lot more of that now, which is really cool. Yeah. So, but are waiting we, for all the, all the weird stuff, right? Like, I wanna... <laughs> but here's the thing. Like now AX3 is like b straight business, right? It's like True. astronaut, <laughs> astronaut, astronaut. It's not like quirky dude that's flying to space and is now an astronaut. It's like, you know. I mean, it's still like it's still insanely expensive to do that, yeah, right? That's the problem. I mean, yeah, and you know that was the one thing that I couldn't get out of John is he wouldn't share how much he, <laughs> he paid for his ticket. Um, but yeah, like there's only so many people that have that amount of money that want to do that, willing to do things like that. So um, yeah, you're that it's a very limited. Like I mean. I'm sure the three of us would love to do that. I don't think the three of us have the money or we'll never have the money to do that. Yeah, so. it's like, <laughs> and the, the NDAs, they probably sign about how much money they paid. It's like, if you disclose the price, we will fly you back up there and kick you out the airlock. And then that will be it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the NDA you're signing right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do think that um, some of these, these suborbital flights are like in our lifetime, they have, uh, I think it's totally reasonable that they could approach something that, you know, middle class people could afford. Like it would be, yeah, it would, yeah, sure. it would not be like a like a cash expense. Like it would be, I saved up a bunch of retirement money because when I retire, I want to go to space, and that's what I've been working on. And you know, yeah. it's my nest egg, or like you know, there, there are there are people that get get there, especially if you think about like if it's you know if it's half a million bucks today to ride on on New Shepard or Virgin Galactic, like if they can get the cadence up and we can realize all those like amazing uh, uh, cost reduction dreams, like maybe it's maybe it's only half that in. 30 years and you know it's not like out of the question so mm -hmm. yeah if they knock a zero off then it's in that range of like the oh, epic expedition yeah. that you've like planned for you know, <laughs> if they knock your, a zero off today like I, I would be like going to check up my finances to see where <laughs> you'd be like moving some shit around yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> could I I'm like what if, if I did this carry a zero <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean even if I did the... nothing for the five years after the trip then like yeah, you, go, you know go to the work. bank yeah, and then if I yeah. Them... <laughs> I'd buy those Costco pallets of food to eat for the following three years <laughs> If I live like a prepper from when I get back till like the time that I'm solvent again. This can be done. This can be done. There we go. Yeah. There we go. We all so. say this, but like none of us have dropped cash on a zero G flight, you know? I and I was I was gonna say that like as I know a zero G flight's quite expensive. Um I think and, it, you, know, you could do them for, for like most people. I think if we put a package together, we could do like ten grand a pop. Yeah. I think that's about right, yeah. Which is in it, like fancy it's... vacation budget range. I think it's about eight thousand, honestly. Well, there I think you go. It's less than it's, that. And based on the flight prices to Europe right now, that's looking like yeah. just as reasonable as like going yeah. to Europe for two weeks, from my perspective. <laughs> I and, yeah, but and you gotta I, go to all the way to Seattle or whatever, and that's gonna cost you another freaking fifteen. <laughs> no, I do it for Florida. Yeah, they I stay at Brendan's house. I have no, I have no cost <laughs> yeah. of uh, staying down there. It's good. We'll feed you. We'll yeah. even feed you here, Anthony. So <laughs> leave a couple loons in his in his bedroom, and we're good. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's the loon tax. I, I, I mean yeah. that. I mean that was a really cool experience. Like I had, I had an opportunity to do that. We didn't pay for it. Um, I went covering a story, but I mean that is that was kind of a life changing experience in itself, you know. And and yeah, so for eight or ten grand, yeah, I would go do that. So. Not yeah. that I'm. I don't make a profit or. A, don't or a contact Brendan. He's not in the market. Don't yeah. hit him up. Don't buy his email address from somebody. It's he's not going <laughs> to buy the ticket. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah. No. I think I, 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 the, the the zero G flight. Like I I would like to do one, but I, I don't know if eight thousand is right for me because I think when I compare it to like something like a space flight, it doesn't have the look out the window effect. And I think that might be. It's either that specifically that like interests me, or that in combination with the zero G. Mm. Like I yeah. want to like turn upside down and see the Earth above me. You know, like I want to do that. Like yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can really get that out yeah. of a yeah. out of a vomcom. So yeah. we do have a contractual obligation to one day do the off nom vomcom though. The off nom off nom vomcom, yeah. vomcom rom com. Yeah, film that's a rom com the on the off nom vomcom. Yeah, yeah. that's a. Real... <laughs> yeah. 
it's a thing we're obliged to do (laughs) by the yeah um (laughs) one thing i'm curious about when you were talking to john is like did vibe check is a thing we like to do uh ax1 notoriously or like kind of hinted at but maybe wasn't openly spoken about that it was kind of a shit show on the station in terms of like mm-hmm. organization, time management, expectations. Do you have any sense that AX2 went significantly better? Was it better prepared for or was it just like you were talking about art the whole time and you wasn't wasn't really concerned about that? Well, he so he worked a lot with that crew before they launched cuz he was he was backup pilot for right. AX1 yeah, um yeah. and you know, he he did kind of allude that you know they learned quite a bit from from that mission, and it seemed to me that you know when he got back, we, we were chatting, and he got everything he wanted to get accomplished while he was there. So, um, yeah, it, it seemed like well, he didn't complain, but I also don't feel like he would complain publicly <laughs> <laughs> about it. Probably, <laughs> sure. know, Probably like, also like, in the airlock NDA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> like he didn't write a Google review on it or something like, um, but. Um, but yeah, no, I, I got the sense that that he felt prepared for it. I did ask, like, you know, about the actual launch itself. Um, you know, were you were you prepared, and did you get through enough training? And he, he says, yeah, it's like it's exactly how it was described to us, and how we thought it was going to be, and uh, yeah. and yeah, he said his time on station was exactly what he wanted to do. So, yeah, that's good. I I really would love to do like a deep dive into both Axiom's training and SpaceX's training for private astronauts. Like Axiom is in particular though, because it's ISS based. Like I would love to know, you know, what does John Schopner go through that's different from what a NASA astronaut goes through? Cause it's like fundamentally it's all the same hardware, right? They're still launching yeah. a Falcon and a Dragon going to the ISS and coming back again. So like there's, there's so many similarities to it. So I'm, I'd be really, really curious to know what is different about the training programs. I think that's really fascinating. I have no insight to offer on that comment. I just nope. say yeah, it. And I, I don't. I don't either. He was he was pretty tight lipped about that too. I think you know for you know, yeah, NDA yeah, yeah. reasons and stuff like that. But yeah, it would be it would be really interesting, um, and because like especially people like like John and, and some of the other ones that that went on AX one. Like I mean, these are like pretty busy people, right? <laughs> you know, they're not they're not. It's not their whole career to train for this mission. Like you got to yeah, yeah. you know, slip right. these in between board meetings or you know. It's kind of things like that. Like it's it's pretty wild how tough, that tough do life, make that yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's real tough life. But uh, but it would be interesting in how I you gotta how you get on some happen. boards. Hit me up yeah. if you want me on your board. I gotta get on some of those. Yeah, they sound great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, but it's it, I, I mean, I guess there's probably some like I would expect there to be some sort of reduced responsibility, right? Like like you know, an yeah. AX one astronaut probably doesn't have all the. They may get some. Uh, like standard safety training well they must obviously get some safety training for how to deal with emergencies on the iss but like you know if there is some sort of emergency there must be some sort of like thing where the nasa astronauts do this and you get to the escape capsule or something right yeah. you know like you something get as like that far so, into the corner of that dragon as you possibly can and you stay there yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> you know so, that area yeah, under well. the seats you get under there as quick as possible and hold on like we don't in know what's the, gonna happen the, so yeah in, you go down to the independent podcaster section of the dragon <laughs> 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 yeah, right next to where they store the sweaters and the water bottles. Get that. Yeah. yeah. And then the bags of poop. <laughs> yeah, I do wonder if like one of the NASA astronauts or, or even uh, one of the other participants like had to like supervise one. Like if there was an emergency, like your buddy is this person. <laughs> like go to them and Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you just latch on. They hold their hand as they're I'm like know. I'm on I'm strapping onto Victor Glover's leg for sure. Like I feel like <laughs> Oh yeah. That he's man, got the, that man will save you. Yeah. He's got the muscles to do it. I can do his jack. I can just imagine you clutching his leg. Yeah. Like, Holding on tight. This leg is swole. <laughs> it'll get me that'll get me home, that leg. Yeah. yeah. I won't touch the biceps. They're too I don't wanna mess up the body. Can't can't fit your hands around him, is that why? <laughs> yeah. my, my arms. I'm too little. Yeah. In the spirit of the last, you know, week or week or so in the country here i feel like i should have probably put my number on a friendship bracelet and tried to get it to victor glover like that feels like the there route go. to yeah. success that so it. yeah yeah i'll try that <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to know the context of that joke uh, it's so wholesome jake it's not it even is. it is <laughs> we'll let it jake is. figure it out 
<laughs> It'll be fine. Right, I'll Google, I guess I'll Google friendship bracelets later. <laughs> That's for the Venn diagram of NFL fans and Taylor Swift fans. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, Florida topic that I did not put on the list, Brendan, but Jake and I were talking about it earlier, earlier this week. And I don't know, you might, you might have a little something on this. Uh, have you looked at the Psyche launch recently? And there's some things going on with this. Uh, is it going to happen? Are they going to launch this I, thing? I have not. Um, I did just look at it because I've got a show next week and we're not covering it and I need to. So I'm looking for a psyche expert. <laughs> it looks, it looks, um, but I'll leave it to a, you guys. I have no idea what's going on. There was a tweet today from, from, uh, Marsha Smith. She says the PAO said they're, they're accepted. So they're good. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Cause that's what I was going to ask about the government shutdown and how things go. <laughs> oh, and yeah, yeah. Jake and I were trying to do like the, 40 chess on has there ever been a government shutdown when there was also a launch that had a very tight launch window and we couldn't yes. find an example of like uh, a planetary launch window though yeah no i think like the human stuff goes and the iss stuff goes fine but the... yeah there was there actually was a government shutdown and i remember there was it was a spacex launch i can't remember what it was but it was delayed I can't, was it falcon heavy um because I remember, I, I remember PAO told me that there was going to be a problem, and I reached out to SpaceX. And I was like, "Yeah, I was told that government shutdown's going to, you know." I remember that like, one, yeah. For and then long, mission that was though. Yeah, the the PR person just kind of yelled at me and was like, "Where'd you hear that from? That's not happening!" Blah blah blah. <laughs> you lie. And then like it, it, then it did get affected by it, and it's like, "Do you still want to comment?" Um, but um, yeah, so def- it definitely happened at one time because I got yelled at. Um, <laughs> I can't remember why. <laughs> All right. This, well, this is good because yeah. we were getting is- into like if if government shutdown happened and Psyche was not accepted and was unable to launch, tight launch window of like twenty days or something. Yeah, it's not it's, it's not big, pretty yeah. short. No. Mm-hmm. And then it's already a year behind because it was supposed to launch last year, and then we're in the territory of like what now? Uh, that would yeah, it's not good after that. So yeah, um, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, it makes sense. I, I thought they would be, but. I thought they would too, but I, what my main concern was like, what does that process actually mean? Uh, Cause I wouldn't have yeah. been shocked if it was like the government has to shut down before the exception portal opens. And then you can apply for exceptions, which everyone does on the same day. And then you would get approved. And by then they've missed the launch. Window. <laughs> and no one's working on it. That was my concern. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. All right. This is good. This is, that's uh, an improvement and who knows, Brendan, well, maybe I'll see you. I don't know. Yeah, I, well, I would, I hope so, but this is also the, you know, we're in Atlantic storm season as well, so that's true. <laughs> something else that to, true. to be concerned. I think we're okay for the next week or so, but uh, yes, but I am going to be in the state of Florida in the next few days, and I am known to attract them. So, well, thanks. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, not... beware. Uh, how many of them are even named at this point? I think we're probably okay, right? Like the ones that are coming in the future. Yeah. <laughs> We might have to go back, like we're getting. To... <laughs> so there's not enough names. Yeah. We gotta yeah what, are you on queue yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're pretty close. Yeah. What is the next one? I uh, can't remember what well, the next. One Felipe or whatever is is right yeah. now, right? Yeah. So yeah. Is, yeah. And Rena. Right Rena. We're, we're at the there? R's. Okay. Yeah, we're at the R's. So then so. S is next, right? Steve. Hurricane Steve. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one on the list <laughs> sorry Kate, steve it's gonna be steve yeah. <laughs> man remember last year all the hurricane tracking that was going on with artemis uh, on, on the pad what a what a season what a great season i had so much fun on that season <laughs> that was, that was so nine's wild. on map oh we had to go back <laughs> We had a storm so late in the season too. Um, I remember, like, we did. We had an election and then a hurricane, um, which was like unheard of. Um, yeah, to have yeah. A, a name storm hitting Florida in, in November. So, um, on the topic of launches, I have a couple of launch topics that I thought would be fun to talk with you guys about. Uh, yeah. Brendan, the last time you were on the show. I believe you told us that you did in fact touch Terran one. I did. Yeah. And that's the last Terran one there ever was. So yeah, it blew up. <laughs> I wonder how responsible you are for it. So I did, I did share that. Yeah. And a few other reporters um, came to my side and said that they also, they also touched yeah. it. So we cannot, 
squarely put this on me, but I do take a bit of responsibility. I will, <laughs> I will be, I will be held accountable and take a fair amount of responsibility. So I, I it didn't, may not luckily, be your fault, but once again, mainstream media really, really screws the pooch. We really do. <laughs> 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 too good too good can't argue with that you're absolutely right Jay. <laughs> oh yeah okay that's all we have for that segment that's so it we can... no, no <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually curious no i'm curious i'm curious how what you're uh you know we're we're a little bit we're out of our like in the feelings phase of Terran one's departure from this sweet sweet earth i'm mm -hmm. curious like how you initially took their decision to bail on Terran one and if you've where you're at now on relativity and you know is there stock rising or falling for you as a florida man who likes to see launches from your backyard yeah i mean i i, I mean i've had the chance to talk with tim ellis quite a few times and like he, he knows what he's doing at least i like to think <laughs> and so i think that this is you know they they, they did what they wanted to with Terran one and um yeah it, it'll be interesting to see i mean it's great to have all sorts of other launches here in in florida like i so the stats are really in, in yeah, like super fascinating like we hit we're over 50 launches from the space coast this year and like when we hit the 50th launch it was a spacex launch and like 47 other launches were spacex two were ula and then one was relativity <laughs> um like that's what we've done this year um so yeah diversity of launches would be great that's here. that that's that started off as like really impressive and now it's just like what yeah. what are we yeah. doing <laughs> yeah so it's like they're mostly fa falcon nines here which i mean they're really cool you know and awesome to see so once we can get you know if, if Terran r comes on like that'll be really cool to actually see and uh yeah, I, I have confidence that, that they'll do what they say they're going to do. I mean, I didn't think that they were going to pull off Terran 1, and I mean, that thing left the ground, so that's pretty cool. They got, they got to get it going before we have to just rename it the uh, Cape Falcon. It's basically what yeah. they have to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Falcon <Yeah>. Space Center. <laughs> yeah. It's it's truly what it is. I mean, and like it's it's to the point now where, like, I mean, we stopped reporting on every single launch just because that would be somebody's full-time job um yeah if not two people to just report on every single launch here and you know pretty much any other day you can look up in the sky and see falcon 9 taking off which i mean that's awesome that's really cool but yeah, yeah, yeah. i want to see, no, see something new well uh, the next news is uh, the <laughs> Origins CEO Bob Smith is on the outs uh, in a few months here. And I don't know if Jake, I see you're wearing a blue shirt. <laughs> Jake does, in fact, enjoy his commute. <laughs> uh Yes. That's that's a super super niche inside Blue Origin. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we may or may not have made a purchase off an unknown Shopify site <laughs> to get some shirts in our life. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've I've gotten resounding positive vibes from all the Blue Origin people that I communicate with on this situation. Uh, it was always unclear on like, you know, Bob Smith got a lot of flack generally i feel like from the community at large uh, it was mm -hmm. always unclear to me because they're so secretive and kind of cagey about mm -hmm. stuff how much of that tracked to the issues they were having or the slowness or whatever but like i don't know the vibes are the vibes are way up on, on the news so <laughs> i'm kind of interested <laughs> to see what happens what i mean wasn't this plan didn't didn't wasn't there kind of an exit plan for him anyways uh... Uh... I, the vibes that I was picking up sound like no. Oh, really? <laughs> I heard yeah. the word finally a couple of times. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like this is this is the tough one to like comment on, right? Because like, it, unless you are, you know, you work there or you are otherwise intimately involved with the leadership of Blue Origin, like it's really hard to like make a judgment. So the only thing you can really do is just like remember that a CEO is ultimately responsible for the company's results, right? And is like, is anyone anywhere satisfied with blue origins output and i think there's lots of reasons why they're maybe they aren't outputting as much as they want but i think most people will say no i wish they had done more faster right and so 
that's like the only judgment you can really kind of cast in so in that in that sense i'm kind of like great let's let's try a different person that sounds like a great option at this point <laughs> let's try to get some things moving here uh, the only yeah. time these changes aren't uh are like what you were saying brendan like oh this was like planned out in particular and not a you know no drama behind the scenes here is when it happens like right after the landmark achievement that was mm -hmm. clearly that person's tenure you know like i launched that thing and i'm out right even look at spacex of how many people left in the leadership crew like after they had either finally gotten like landing and reuse sorted out or crew flights were going fine it was always following those like major mm -hmm. milestones mm -hmm. and yeah in the in the middle of like i mean <laughs> are they still technically launching next year per like uh, they've been launching. Next I mean, yeah, because they're launching an escapade. Yes, I yeah. know that, but <laughs> <laughs> but they have that Mars launch, um, mm -hmm. which yeah, Jake, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you believe in heavily. <sighs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I'm. I, I have a lot of questions about the escapade launch, and <laughs> yeah, because it's as like, such as what as such as what. Well, just like it's a like a CubeSat basically, and they're gonna put it on a new one. <laughs> and so I'm like, is that the only payload? I feel like they're gonna add more payloads. And they're like, no, 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 no other payloads. It's just that. And I was like, okay, well, so is that really? Is this just a test flight then that the, a CubeSat's hitching a ride on? And it's like, okay, then is it really gonna launch on time? Because this is a planetary spacecraft. It's got a launch window, and it's got to like it's got to nail it. You can't just willy nilly shoot this thing into whatever mm, time window you see want. See also though your previous statement, right? Like, <laughs> well, there's just all this extra Delta V. We'll just blast it in whatever yeah. direction you want. Like, sure, I mean, okay. it's like a it's 40 a ton to Leo vehicle for a cube set. So, like, yeah, but, then, but then you have to ask that question about Blue Origin's like past Leo capability. And, like, the way I understand yeah. it is that, like, its only job is to put something very, very large, very, very close to the Earth. And, like, past that, all the efficiency just drops off a right. cliff. And it can't do, like, you know, it's like so the Long March 5B. That's Basically, just like, it's just it's the, the just Leo and like feet. yeah, <laughs> screw yeah. all the other orbits <laughs> with a, with slightly more landing precision is what it is. Long March five B with hopefully we don't know that. <laughs> I'll, I will give them slightly a benefit of doubt on yeah, slightly yeah. at least. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'd be delighted to see New Glenn launch. I don't I don't I don't have a super good read on that yet. Other than there's been some nice pictures with a lot of hardware on the floor, so that's good to see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> that's my new Glenn rant. <laughs> yeah, I go I go back and forth so much, man. Like, you know, yeah. I go through weeks where I'm like, no, there's like no it's not happening anytime soon. And then I go through weeks where I'm like, oh man, they could pop that garage door open anytime now and that would be like that thing would <laughs> well, be I've fully really always said that. Like that's yeah. exactly how it's gonna work with New Glenn is yeah. be like we're gonna hear nothing about it and then they're just gonna roll it out one day and be like, We're yeah, gonna yeah. launch next week. And you're like, What? <laughs> the the thing that is is like we don't there's, we just don't know a lot, right? Like Brandon's yeah. not driving out there every other day with a long telephoto lens, taking pics of whenever they open the door and stuff. There are people that are doing that to some extent, but they don't open the door that much. Like it's occasional, you know. Sure. The thing that the thing that is telling that we have no idea about, and we all can just—I mean, I've heard some stuff. I'm sure Brendan's heard some stuff of how many engines of the first batch are going to ULA versus going to Blue Origin. Do they have to wait until? A certain amount shipped to ULA before they've got their new Glenn set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have heard at least from two or three different places that that is not the case, and they are getting engines while the ULA is still working on Vulcan too. So, hmm. like that's the that's the ball mark there, right? Of or the the high water mark or whatever of like how many BE fours are in their facility. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I haven't heard anything. I mean. I turn to you for these kind of things, Anthony. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you've got you've got your finger on the pulse more than I do. So, theoretically, like once they get seven down to Florida for for New Glenn, they can then like the the tenth and plus engines can start going back to ULA again, right? Because like once, I mean, let's say Blue has they're ready to go, then they get their seven. Like the time that they need engines eight through 14 is going to be way, way past that, right? Because they're going to like take a nice long test campaign and get everything working right. And then they'll yeah. finally fly. And then they're going to get a bunch of data and they're going to have to go back to the drawing board. Like there's a whole process right. that comes after that. So even if that one crashes, like they're like they're going to need more time for engine eight through 14 or totally So true. I imagine yeah. they can they can sort of like get ULA going, get themselves going, and then go back and start filling, it, filling up the ULA manifest, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The fun conspiracy theory is like, 
you know, when hypothetically, if you're test firing an engine, you just like throw a screw in there, get some FOD in there and say, you know what, we just got to work out mm, the next seven to eight off the production line and then we'll ship you the ninth mm. one after this. And then that <laughs> one will be good, right? Like we'll take the heat on the seven that might blow up because who knows what we, if we had screw loose in there. Yeah, yeah We yeah. always come up with these theories, Jake, but then the crackpot or, theories done. Or what, how about this? They send the seven to Florida, they launch a new blend, they land it, they bring it back. And then they ship all seven into ULA and give them a discount. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tested them for you. <laughs> we ran these. Flight proven. Three and a half Vulcans Flight proven here. proven <laughs> I did, while you guys were discussing um, all those theories, um, I did go and look up. The first story I ever did for NPR was on New Glenn. It was when Jeff Bezos was down here announcing the fact that they were going to launch and build it. And this is in September 2015. The first line of my story is at Cape Canaveral Launch Complex 36, Blue Origins founder Jeff Bezos vowed to launch a new orbital vehicle by 2020. <laughs> so yes, we're, we're way off. I'm gonna need that link. <laughs> <laughs> that was back when 2020 was the year of the rocket. <laughs> was that the the old design too? Right with the weird little yeah. like step yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Here I'm. I'm was it, was it 2020? Work. Was it supposed to be? It was New Glenn Vulcan Starship. Like all, all the rockets six. were supposed to launch. Ariane 6 were all yeah. supposed to launch in 2020, right? Yeah. There's probably some other ones we're missing, but yeah. That was the year. Now they're all 2024. That's a yep. rough and one. I was, yeah. I remember telling my editor, I'm like, yeah, it's going to happen. Like, we got to plan coverage for this. And he's like, no, it's not. And it never did. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to be not covering uh, space by the time it does. Yeah, yeah that's what I, I feel like that's going to be it. So. Yeah. We'll spend our yeah. retirement money going down there to, to watch New Glenn launch for the first time and then zip over and do New Shepard flights. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's going to be so for fun to watch. For $50,000. <laughs> just looking at that launch facility from Port Canaveral Beach is ridiculous. That's going to be so yeah. close. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. at the off Mountain Beach, uh, Beach Party location, it's mm -hmm. going to be a great site. Yeah. Yep. That's where we got to go. Yeah. Uh, Brendan. What do you got? What do you got to plug? I'm, I got a link in the show notes for people to check out your interview with John Schaffner. But what else? What else do you want to point people to? Well, uh, speaking of Blue Origin, uh, I just taped an interview with uh, Rob Meyerson um, on kind mm. of the commercial lunar, uh, I guess, uh, commercial and, and lunar space outside of Artemis. I couldn't, I couldn't even, uh, honestly, that, that was a yeah. very telling, like yeah. brain stumble. Like, yeah. The yeah. lunar Com commercial thing. Commercial it's essentially way. how we can make me off of the moon. Um, so yes, I've got, I've got him on there, um, next week, um, which would oh. be fun. And then, uh, I've got, uh, I think we've got Sarah skulls is coming on next week. She's a, a science journalist. She writes about UFO culture. Um, really fascinating conversation about what uh what the ufo culture thinks about the recent nasa uap report uh so oh. pretty insightful <laughs> conversation so i'm sure it's that's a, it's really resounding the reaction yeah yeah it's it's yeah. it's it was an interesting conversation so uh Listen, but Sarah Skulls much, is a phenomenal you, journalist. wait did you do this interview yet yeah yeah okay darn. i was gonna i had a question for you which was what does tom DeLong's return to blink 182 do for <laughs> ufo culture that's the question i i need answered yeah the fact that blink yeah. has an album coming out is that does that change the vibes here uh, yeah that's that's yeah. yeah i actually should have asked about that but uh yeah again you should just be doing my job here anthony so. <laughs> 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 that's what i've got going on that's what i've got going on what anthony's super world into world anthony's super into the alien stories right what now the so fuck he's did you just send me jake? what is this what is going on jake just sent me gonna, with literally <laughs> am i supposed to show this we're gonna close the show with a spanish alien meme <laughs> what is this <laughs> oh yes <laughs> All right, please, please those enlighten are, me. Those are tam those are tamalians. <laughs> tamalians. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> That's fantastic, Jake. That is god. fantastic. I love I love <laughs> and now I'm hungry. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, that. I don't know, Jake. I haven't made the list of off nominees yet, but the uh, Mexican government aliens might be. <laughs> pretty high on the list dude <laughs> that's way up there yep yeah so good yep man got all right everybody <laughs> that's it that's what we got uh brendan burns the best 
donate yeah, to St. Jude, in. and we're going to watch our movies. And uh, Jake, I will not be here next week. As I mentioned, I will be in the state of Florida. TBD, I may be visiting Brendan for a rocket launch. I'm unsure. It depends. Yeah, yeah. On how I'm really it hoping out. it. I'm really hoping it works out because it has I'm, been just forever depends, since know? I've seen both of you. But it'll be great to see Anthony. So, yeah. Yeah. sorry, Jake. We're gonna. That's all good. Good. We're gonna try and throw together some sort of psyche show in your absence. Uh, I'm, I'm still letting the show come to me, so mm-hmm. we'll figure out what it is, and then uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll go from there. Listen, we were doing eight D chess on trying to figure out who to get for the psyche conversation because we were like, yeah. "But if it's shut down, will they be able to talk to us? Should I ask them? I don't know if I can ask them. If yeah. there's is their email work, I don't know. And then if they're not shut down, are they going to be at yeah. the launch? Then they're busy. That's the problem. It's the whole thing. So, yeah. Yeah. So. All right, everybody. All right. Thanks, everyone. That's all we got. Thanks for having me. It was fun. See you, Brennan. Bye.